Hello. I feel like it has been forever since I've created a video because it kind of has. Um, I went back to look through my YouTube videos and the last time I had one was and it was like a jillion and a half years ago. Um, I've moved apartments since then. I think it's been a few months. So I have just gotten to Boston this evening. Um, I came up a little bit early because tickets were cheaper um, to get up here on a Thursday and I I create my own clinical hours, so I have class on Wednesday, but then outside of that, I kind of create all my own stuff. Um, and so I decided to go to clinical on Monday and Tuesday this week, and actually Sunday and Monday. Um, and that way I was able to come up here, and Nick's, one of his really good friends, actually has a beautiful apartment um, that I'm in right now in South End, the South End. You Boston people tell me how you say it. Um, just because I know that's probably not what the locals call They probably say something a little trendy or something. Like when I'm in New York and people call things things that people who live in New York don't call it. So I'm sure I messed that up. But um, it's in the South End of Boston. And it's beautiful and it's so restful. And I love Boston. Fall is in full swing and it's supposed to be in the 50s and 60s and sunny. So I cannot wait to wake up in the morning and go walk around and try to find a coffee um, and then go on a run. It's going to be so great. So it's just me. It's kind of weird. It's quiet. Um, but I think it's good for us to be alone sometimes and just to be okay being alone. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm just chilling out and staying in. And all the other RDs who I'm staying with, we are staying in this um, big house downtown. I think it's downtown. I don't know where I am in Boston, near the convention center. Um, and so we rented it. And Monty, a fantastic food, was the leader on getting us a great Airbnb. And she'll be there. And um, uh, Alex from Delist Knowledge, Alexis from the Homo Sapien, which we have been like text and email friends for over a year. And so we are so pumped to hang out together this weekend. Um, Kylie from I'm Eat That and Rachel from Avocado A Day. Um, nutrition so it should be good I'm excited just to be in Boston and just to it can feel really isolating um, to do what I do as an RD well I don't know that many people who are an RD and then also finishing up a nurse practitioner degree so that's a little odd but it can feel isolating I think all of us would say when you're working at home and you're blogging and you're um, working with clients over the internet and on the phone and it can feel isolating when you're not like in an office with a ton of people and collaborating with them and so I think whenever we get on our monthly conference call um, or we email or something like that it just makes us feel so not alone in all this like we do have colleagues we can help each other out and we can um, we can share ideas and all of those things and so I think that's the exciting part about being together this weekend is we're like we get to spend the whole weekend with people who know exactly what we do um, and are kind of on the same wavelength. And I just love all five of those um, women. They totally refresh me and are encouraging and get me excited and yeah. So um, we're pumped. Um, I will be um, Instagramming and things like that as much as I can this weekend with everything going on and then I'll post about it on Monday, maybe on my um, way back down to the city. I'll be here until Monday morning, so it's a little bit of a long trip, but it's a good one. So, anyways, now that I've blabbered on enough, um, I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been talking to a lot of nutshell clients about similar topics, um, or a similar, this kind of thing, is talking about intuitive eating in a way that um, is what it was supposed to be intended for. I feel like intuitive eating can sometimes get morphed into something it actually um, is not. Um, intuitive eating is not as black and white as I always say. There's tons of gray nutrition, but especially with intuitive eating because it's not just um, eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full. Um, it's not just that because there are a lot of factors that play into our hunger cues. Um, and one book that I would highly recommend is Intuitive Eating. Um, that's a phenomenal book. It's an oldie, but it's been revised a jillion times. It's so amazing. Um, I will link it in this post when I post this video. But um, that book totally is, has, is a wealth of information. But I think a good thing that it does is it points out that intuitive eating is not just eating when you're hungry and stopping with your, when you're full. There are so many components that pull into it. And a huge component of this is um, a satisfaction factor. And satiation, us actually enjoying food and taking pleasure in it and celebrating it are so many things that are important to our relationship with food. And so, yes, of course, um, 
is intuitive eating about realizing when you're hungry and eating and then stopping when you're full and not becoming uncomfortably full. Absolutely. I always tell people never get hungrier than a three and try to stop and be aware and be mindful enough to stop eating when you're to about a seven. Um, but the things that play into that are our emotions, our sleep, our exercise, all where we're at in our period. All of those things are going to play into your hunger cues. If you haven't gotten enough sleep, your body is going to crave more starchier, um, higher, probably carb, higher sugar foods because it's stressed out from the lack of sleep. Um, and when our body is stressed, it senses that we need energy because our natural stress response, how it was always designed um, to function, is that we need energy to get ourselves out of the stressful situation. Um, and so things like, you know, if you were actually running from a burning building or whatever. So our bodies gravitate towards that when we're stressed out. Um, and then also our the balance of ghrelin and leptin gets a little bit off. And so ghrelin is our hunger hormone. It tells us when we're hungry and leptin is our fullness hormone that tells us when we're full. That's, I'm talking very basically here, but when we don't get adequate sleep, those get whacked out and we can't really read those signals adequately. The same thing if you're under a ton of stress, um, those signals get a little bit whacked out. Um, if you're coming from an eating disorder of any sort of restrictive history of eating, whether you're restricting macronutrients, you're restricting carbohydrates, that is, I'm uh, sorry, you're restricting calories, that is going to whack out your body's ability to read its own hunger signals. And so your hunger cues are not fully reliable. You've suppressed ghrelin, the hormone that tells you you're hungry. Um, and I won't blabber on into why that is. Um, and then also, if you're training for an endurance um, race or you're, or maybe perhaps you're struggling with an exercise obsession and you're excessively exercising, that is also going to throw off your ghrelin and your leptin and your hunger cues. So let's say someone who runs a 20 mile long run because they're training for a marathon, I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to be hungry for all, you know, 4,000 of those calories that you might, I'm just throwing out a very general number that you might need to eat to be able to refuel your body for that day. You might not be able to hunger or to follow your hunger cues to a T and that's okay. So there's all these different factors that come in and in learning to intuitively eat is this long journey of self-awareness and becoming aware of your body and its own needs. Um, so to be able to recognize when I'm hungry and when I'm full and also to be able to recognize what my baseline is of how I take care of my body. And if things are, are really off, like let's say I've had a really crappy week of insomnia, I know that even when I'm not hungry, I can be eating out of self-care because I know my body needs it. The same way if it's been four or five hours since I've eaten and maybe I had a big meal so I'm not really that hungry, or maybe my day's just wacky, maybe I'm stressed and I'm just not that hungry because um, I'm nervous and, and everything else. Well, I know that I should probably get a snack because I need to take care of myself. Eating is an act of self-care. Um, and we are grown-ups, and a part of taking care of ourselves is learning to eat and learning to nourish our body well. So that's the first part. And I'm trying not to blabber here because I'm going off the cuff, which is what I always do in these videos because um, I like just chatting with you guys. But the second part of that, and this is something that I always um, will get my clients to, um, if it's necessary, ask themselves these two questions. It's, a, it's an assignment that I, um, or I shouldn't even say assignment, but it's something, it's an intention that we have for the week is to say, okay, before I eat a meal, I'm going to ask myself, what am I craving? And also, what is going to make my body feel good? Because I believe that intuitive eating is two-pronged, right? It's what is going to actually satisfy me in terms of what's going to taste good, what is my body craving, what is going to bring me actually um, like enjoyment and pleasure with food. And then also, um, what would feel good for me to eat? What is going to feel physically good? What is going to give me energy? What is going to make me be productive with whatever I have to do for the rest of the day? Those sorts of things. Because if I eat cupcakes for the next 10 days for every single meal, or let's say even every meal for the whole day, that tastes really awesome. And it's going to taste awesome. But is that going to make me feel good in the long run? Maybe it does. Maybe if I eat a cupcake with my lunch, that actually feels good for me because it keeps my blood sugar stable and I have like some nourishing foods and then I have some soul nourishing foods in the cupcake. Um, but if I only ate like five cupcakes for lunch, that might not make me feel as physically good. I'm throwing out examples here. Now on the flip side, there's this also this 
part that says, okay, if I only ate kale and sweet potatoes and chicken breast or eggs for every single meal, perhaps that would make me feel good physically, right? If I take all the other like emotional factors out of eating, which are healthy and good, and I only ate that for every single lunch, perhaps I might feel physically good if I had like enough sweet potatoes and all that to make sure carbs are adequate and fats. But would I feel emotionally deprived? Would I actually be satisfied emotionally um, and how I enjoy food um, and how it satisfies my taste buds and my cravings and all of that? Maybe not. So it's a balance of both of those things. What's gonna make me feel good physically and what's going to make me feel good, um, let's say like from like a soul, emotional, mental perspective. Because we can restrict ourselves mentally even if we're not restricting ourselves calorically or restricting ourselves carb wise and that's still gonna create a lot of stress um, and a lot a very unhealthy relationship with food um, if you're not allowing yourself to eat particular foods. So in response to that question, the, part of the intuitive eating journey sometimes when you start to let go of any of the, your food rules and it's what I call you come to a place of food utopia to where you give yourself permission to eat anything and everything, it is very normal to go through a period of only wanting to eat foods that have been forbidden in the past. And so that might mean that you have these, by our cultural sense, very unhealthy foods. And I, and I say that because that's what our culture tells us to believe. We label foods as good and bad. Um, but that's my, that might mean what your day looks like. It might be a breakfast that you haven't had in years. Um, it might be something for lunch you've never permitted yourself to have and it might be in a way where one or two cupcakes don't satisfy. You know, you, maybe you need three cupcakes, but the whole point here is to say, am I eating with intention? Am I eating mindfully? And am I being obedient to what my body actually craves and what it actually needs? And that's not something that happens overnight. It happens over months and years. Um, I have clients I've been working with for 18 months, two years, and we're like on the peak, on the top of the cliff, like reaching this pinnacle of like awesomeness in terms of intuitive eating. Um, and it can take that long. And so um, I'll end up blabbering, but my whole point here is to kind of get yourself off of an agenda, and this is between you and your body, and you figuring out and learning how to best take care of yourself. Um, and intuitive eating is definitely not a linear journey, um, and it can take time. Um, and it's all a process. It kind of goes like this. It's not like, oh, once I start, then I'm just going to make all this progress. No, it can be very up and down sometimes. And um, and I think with anything in life, I'm always such a believer in in our lows. We learn so much, and the lows make the highs that much sweeter. And so lows and, and bumps in the road are where tons of learning and growth happen. And so there's definitely so much positive in that. I don't think we should brush past that or beat ourselves up over it, but we should actually um, embrace it and engage with it. Um, and see how we can learn from it. So anyways, that's just a, a little snippet, but I hope that those kind of two tips were helpful is asking yourself, what am I actually craving in terms of taste and what's gonna satisfy me and actually what will make me feel good? And those two things combined perhaps can help guide you in making a food choice. Um, alrighty, that's it for now. Maybe I'll do a second part next week. Um, but I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I hope you have something awesome planned. Um, lots of fall things. Um, fall's my favorite season. I love the cold. I could do without the summer. So I'm pumped about it. All right, guys, you take care and have an awesome weekend and eat something amazing. All right. Bye.